blessed Thursday morning. Very early today here out in this wooded area. The sun is just trying to come up now and reminds me of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 1 verse 35 which says when it was still dark out early in the morning Christ went up to the mountain to pray to his father. And it's a verse I try to remember in my own personal life especially as you get up and as you go on through the day and the world the flesh and the devil start to come into your world more and more it's good to start your day in the presence of god and just thankful to be with all of you today uh as we go through the thought for the day today it's deuteronomy chapter 12 i mean chapter 10 and as i was going through this chapter of the bible when i came to verse 12 it speaks about the fear of god um, we often equate fear with unnatural unhealthy relationships um, when I was younger I worked in a group home for 12 years and as a crisis team member and some of the men young boys young men uh, would live in these cottages these dorms and oftentimes these kids would urinate around their bed at night and I would find out later they would do that so the scent of their urine would keep other kids away from them while, he, while they were trying to sleep so they wouldn't be violated in any way. Today, I recently heard uh, on a Christian ministry that I follow on the internet, some college students now are being given by their professors CBD gummies for free because they're anxious and fearful over the coming election and who might win and who might lose. And when I was thinking of these events that sometimes you hear about in life or might experience, fear can be very unnatural, detrimental, unhealthy, but it also can be good. What we mean by fearing God is not that he is a ruthless dictator. It's talking about how he is a jealous God. That's his name. It says in Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, God's name is jealous. Just like a parent or a spouse or any relationship you have, you might be jealous for the ones that you have affection for and love, and you don't want to share their, the, the glory you're supposed to have with them with someone else. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8 reminds us that God is one, and he will not share his glory with another. When I come home from work at night, I'm tired, and my wife wants to talk about her day and things that went on in the day for her, and I have to give my attention as much as I can. If I don't, she would get jealous. She would get upset. Sometimes when spouses don't pay attention to their loved ones enough, it's because their interests are divided. Their glory is with too much with the things of this world. And we as Christians need to be careful that we do not become cluttered with the things of this world and make idols. The last verse in 1 John, the epistle of 1 John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 21, where we're reminded as little children, we ought to stay away from idols. Little children are very dependent on their parents. We ought to be dependent on our heavenly father, just as earthly children are dependent on their earthly parents and to stay away from idols. We can make idols out of anything. We're living in a time right now where the World Series is about to start. How many people make idols out of their sports teams or their favorite ball players, putting them before God? We're in a political season. How many people will put their emphasis on a politician, thinking they're going to change the country and the world? And I have nothing wrong with voting. I have nothing wrong with watching a ball game. But as long as it doesn't take precedence in your life, my friends, this is why we have to fear God. He deserves our all in all. And when we do fear God, we will learn to obey his commands more and more. And we're commanded to come to Christ. And if anyone is watching this dev devotional video today, come to him as your good shepherd, as your Lord and Savior. Christ told us in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 14, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. I am thankful to the Lord that Christ is my shepherd and he knows me and loves me even when I am faithless uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 reminds us that even when we're faithless, God remains faithful. 
In Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 7, we read the parable of the lost sheep and how often the good shepherd goes after that sheep that wanders away. And Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6 reminds us that we are by nature sheep. And that's what we do. We go astray. But let us be thankful to God that salvation belongs to the Lord, as Jonah chapter 2, verse 9 reminds us, and that he who began the good work will be faithful to complete it. As we read in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, God starts the work, he completes it, and he watches over us. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6, we read of people who seem to be saved and then fall away. My friends, let us be careful not to get into wrong doctrine. You cannot lose your salvation. There are people who will rejoice in the Lord. They will go to church. They might even make a profession of faith with their lips, but they were never of the Lord. In Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 20, you can read for yourself there the parable of the sower. And the sower goes out and plants seeds, four types of seeds. Only one really is fruitful and good. The other seeds basically are planted in unfertile ground, rocky soil, sun-scorched earth. And what Christ is saying is that these are people who eventually fall away. They came to the Word of God. They seemed to rejoice. They got baptized. Uh, and remember, in Acts chapter 8, Simon, uh, there was a man by, the, man by the name of Simon. He was a sorcerer. He got baptized, but he was unsaved. He was never truly saved. Uh, there are people that Christ said were going to say are going to say to me, Lord, Lord, in Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty one to twenty three. And Christ is going to say, I never knew you because the things of this world choked out the fruit. My friends, when Christ was tempted by Satan, 40 days and 40 nights, we are told in Luke chapter four, verse eight, Christ said to Satan, you are to worship God and only him only. Let us learn to worship the Lord, my friends. Worship him, as Christ said in John chapter 4, verse 24, in spirit and truth, the Holy Spirit, the truth, which is Christ, the truth, which is the word of God, the living word of God, Christ, the written word of God, the scriptures. The one who fears God, truly fears the Lord, has an earnest, ongoing desire to obey Christ as Lord and Savior. Not just Savior, Everybody wants to be saved and be freed from hell and go to heaven. He also must be your Lord. He must be the one that rules and controls your life. Not that it's going to be perfect here on earth. We're going to have our struggles. The flesh and the spirit, Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, reminds us, war against each other. But let us have a desire to worship God more and more from our hearts as the Apostle Paul reminds us under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Where is your heart today? Where is your affections? Think about what you are thinking about through the day. Is it God, Christ? Is it sharing the word with the lost? Is it helping others in need? Is it a desire to be obe obedient to the word and read the word throughout the day, praying throughout the day? Or is it Worried about how the Yankees or the Dodgers are going to do. Who's going to win the election? My health, my kids, uh, whatever it might be, your finances, your relationships. I'm lonely. I'm depressed. I'm, I'm, are you filled with these things too much? Let nothing take captive of your heart, my friends. Let God be first, as Christ told us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything else shall be added unto you. You will have peace in the midst of your storms of life. Storms are going to come. I know there's a lot of preachers out there that tell you once you come to the Lord, everything is going to be uh, banana Sunday with uh, little sprinkles and cherry on top and whipped cream. No. Trials are going to come. But when you have Christ as the anchor of your soul, you'll be on solid ground that you'll be able to overcome. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. May we have a healthy, spiritual fear of you, reverence for you, for who you are and the attributes of who you are. And on, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.